There we go. Um, all right, welcome everyone to this edition of the Long Range Colloquium hosted by the Virtual Science Forum. It's my pleasure to introduce Chu Zhu Chang from Penn State University. And he is, he is by now a longstanding leader in the growth and measurement of thin films of topological materials, including topological insulators, quantum anomalous Hall insulators, and other systems. Today, we're going to learn about uh, his work on quantum anomalous Hall insulators uh, based on topological insulator thin films with uh, induced mag with magnetism. And so if you have any questions during the talk, please use the raise hand function of Zoom. And as the moderator, I will alert Chuzu to the presence of questions. So Chuzu, you won't need to keep a too, too close of an eye on the participants list. Um, and with that, uh, Chuzu, please take it away. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, I'm Chuzu Chan from Penn State. And uh, because the the you you can you can disturb me if you have any questions. So first, uh, thank the kind invitation from Walla, and uh, happy to give a talk here. And uh, the title of my talk, as you see here, is just a quantum anomaly for effect in magnetic topological insulator uh, system. So I, I have been in this field for more than uh, ten years, and uh, and uh, less the because I know this is a colloquium, so I try to make it from a very simple point of view. So let's start with the. Uh, the dispensive phenomena in the kinetic matter physics, we know that there are only two phenomena in kinetic matter physics showing the zero resistance. So the first one is the superconductivity. So it was first discovered by the uh, Netherlands physicist, the hacker on us in the 1911. And the second one is the dispensionalist phenomena is the quantum hole effect. It was first discovered by the one cleansing in the 1980s. We know that the in the in the quantum hole effect, uh, the the bulk is an insulator, and the dispensionless current flows through uh, the edge of the sample. And the quantum we know the quantum hole effect uh, can uh, can can only be realized in high mobility two dimensional electron gas uh, under high magnetic field. You know, today in my talk, I will talk about a unique quantum hole effect. Uh, under zero magnetic field, we call it uh, quantum anomalous hole effect. And, uh, and the quantum anomalous hole effect is just a quantum hole effect under zero magnetic field without the need of the magnetic field. So in the last part of my talk, I will briefly discuss the uh, Marana physics by combining this kind of the superconductor and uh, quantum anomalous hole uh, phenomena. And uh, first, I, I want to acknowledge my student, my postdoc, and uh, my uh, collaborators. Uh, and uh, this work done at Penn State is supported by DOE, NSF, uh, and uh, Air Force, Army, and some private foundation such as Moore and uh, Sloan. So I really appreciate uh, their, their help and uh, support. So here is the outline of my talk. I will first give a brief introduction about quantum anomalous hole effect and topological insulator. Uh, I will show you why and how we use the topological insulator to realize the quantum anomalous hole effect. You may know that the, with many efforts uh, in 2013, when I was a graduate student in Tsinghua University, uh, I was the first to realize the quantum anomalous hole effect. Uh, in the chromium doped uh, topological insulator system. And later I moved to uh, MIT. At MIT, I know the Walla, I think around the 2013. So, uh, and, uh, and I did four years postdoc at MIT. And in 2017, I joined the Penn State and continued the research uh, on the quantum anomalous hole effect. So the first project is we fabricate the magnetic uh, topological insulator sandwich heterostructure and uh, realize the axon insulator state for the first time. And we also uh, fabricate the um, uh, magnetic tier and uh, tier this kind of the multi-layer structure and realize the uh, high chain number of quantum anomalous hole effect just last year. And based on this kind of the quantum anomalous hole insulator uh, grew in my group, uh, we fabricated the quantum anomalous hole and the superconductor uh, hybrid device. And uh, we found that the observation of the uh, half quantized plateau in transport 
is unlikely induced by the formation of this kind of the Carol Marana. And uh, finally, I will give a brief summary. So let me introduce the Hall effect. So when the current flows through a conducting material, which is in a perpendicular magnetic field, the charge carrier will be pushed towards the side of the sample uh, by the Lorentz force. And a transverse voltage, uh, we usually call it Hall voltage, uh, will de develop across the sample. You know, this effect, we call it Hall effect. Uh, and the Hall effect was first discovered in the uh, 1879 by Adam Hall when he was a graduate student in the John Hopkins. And this is the uh, original data of the Adam Hall's original data on a good leaf. You know that the Hall effect is still uh, being used to identify the carrier type, carrier density, and carrier mobilities of the samples. So, and uh, around 100 years later, you know, the quantized version of the whole effect I just I introduced uh, is the, we call it quantum Hall effect. The quantum Hall effect uh, was first uh, realized in the 1980s. And the, we can see that in this quantum Hall effect at high magnetic field, you know, uh, the, the whole resistance is quantized. And at the same time, uh, the longitudinal resistance goes to zero. Uh, as I just said, the quantum Hall effect is usually observed in two-dimensional uh, electron gas and, uh, uh, and under the high magnetic field. And uh, the quantum anomalous Hall, as I just introduced, is the zero magnetic field uh, quantum Hall effect. You know, this is the... Uh, this is the whole family. Uh, there are three basic members we call it a whole effect, uh, enormous whole effect, and spin whole effect, and their quantized version, and uh, quantum whole effect, quantum enormous whole effect, and quantum spin whole effect. Quantum spin whole effect is just the two dimensional, uh, uh, the two dimensional topological insulator. So, in my talk, I will focus on the a uh, last member of the whole family is quantum Hall, quantum anomalous Hall effect. In quantum anomalous Hall effect at zero magnetic field, the whole resistance is quantized. Uh, at the same time, the longitudinal resistance uh, goes to zero. And uh, when the sample magnetization is up, the carrier eddy state goes this way. And when the sample magnetization is down, the Carroll eddy state will go opposite way. So this is just the Carroll eddy state uh, formed in quantum anomalous Hall insulator at zero magnetic field. And we can say that the chirality of the quantum anomalous Hall effect uh, depends on the magnetization of the sample. This is the arrow, it does the uh, magnetization of the samples. And this kind of the Carroll eddy state in quantum anomalous Hall effect is usually thought to be and uh, spin polarized and also ballistic. And uh, unlike, uh, unlike the quantum hole effect, we know that the quantum hole effect, which starts from the experiment, and the quantum anomalous hole effect uh, was first predicted by Duncan Hodan. And the, we know that just uh, uh, half of the reason I think Hodan received the Nobel Prize. The, a uh, couple of years ago, it just because of the theoretical prediction of the quantum anomalous Hall effect. And in the, the Hordan's model was based on graphene, a periodic magnetic field, but without uh, fl uh, net flux. At that time, there is no, uh, no this kind of the graphene, this kind of name, and it is just a carbon monolayer of the carbon atom. So in this Hordan's model, we can see that Hordan took the nearest neighbor hoping and the second nearest neighbor hoping in his calculation. If the second nearest neighbor hoping T2 is zero, you know that there, there will be two Dirac cones located at the corner of the Brillouin dome. This is just the graphene. You know, when the phase fat of the second nearest neighbor hoping is zero, and uh, there, uh, you know, the time reversal symmetry of the system will be broken, uh, and uh, and uh, a gap and a gap will open at the dial point when the face is included in his calculation. So, uh, so this kind of if from the theoretical prediction, if we could tune the chemical potential into this gap, we usually call it a magnetic exchange gap. 
we could realize the quantum anomaly effect. But uh, uh, in reality, we know that due to the very weak spin orbit coupling in graphene layers, uh, we could not realize the quantum anomaly state uh, in the uh, in this kind of the graphene system by magnetic doping. And on the other hand, quantum anomaly hole effect can also be considered as the quantized version of the anomaly hole effect. We know that the anomaly hole effect is just the hole effect in the ferromagnetic material. So the anomaly hole effect in ferromagnetic material can be intrinsic or extrinsic. You know, today in my talk, uh, we focus on the intrinsic anomaly hole effect. You know, the intrinsic property of the anomaly hole effect uh, was first recognized by the Kamplers and Lattinger in the 1954. And, uh, and they just thought this kind of the intrinsic anomalous hole effect just in, uh, induced by the energy band is intrinsic property uh, of the material of the ferromagnetic material. So we know that when the barrier language was established in the 1980s, the whole conductance can be calculated by the integral of the barrier curvature uh, in the first Brillouin dome. And the integral of the barrier curvature uh, can be determined by an integer number just a two pi times C, C is an integer number. And it's just the, we call it chain number. So the whole conductance from these two equations, we can get the whole conductance is just E square over H times C. So this is a very simple, uh, this kind of the equation. From this equation, we can say that if C is non zero, we could get the sigma X, Y quantized. So from this equation, we could get the two conditions uh, for the quantum anomalous hole. C is not zero, we usually call it, this is, uh, there is inverted boundary structure in the material. Today, we usually call it uh, topological material. And the, the, the other uh, condition is this material must be a, a ferromagnetic insulator. And the chain number C, it just uh, determines the, how many these kind of uh, carol eddy state in the quantum anomalous hole insulators. Uh, I will talk about this kind of the chain numbers uh, later. So in 2016, the discovery of the topological insulator made the search for made the realization of the quantum anomaly hole effect become possible. So now let me introduce what is what the topological insulator is. So this is a band insulator, this is conduction band, and this is valence band. When the strong spin orbit coupling is introduced into the, this band insulator and a linear dispersion band, uh, between the conduction band and the valence band will be formed. So this is, we call it uh, the Lacker surface state. And this, this material, we call it topological uh, insulators. You know, obviously from this kind of the band structure, we can say that topological insulator uh, satisfy the first condition I just listed for the realization of the quantum anomaly for effect. So before moving on, let me say a few words about the, the topological insulators. You know, the topological insulator uh, can be clarified into 2D topological insulator. It's just the quantum spin hole effect I just introduced and the 3D topological insulators. And the 2D topological, and uh, both of them has already been re realized in the real materials. And 2D topological insulator was first I realized that in the mercury tyride quantum wells and later in this kind of the indium arsenide and gallium antimony quantum wells and also more recently in the 1T primer tungsten monolayers, I think Wallad uh, has done uh, great contributions in this kind of the material. Uh, and the 3D topological insulator has been uh, first discovered in the bismuth antimony uh, alloys and also in this kind of the bismuth cyanide family material and, uh, and later there are a lot of this kind of the 3D topological insulators. So in my experiment, we mainly uh, talk about the bismuth cyanide uh, family topological insulators. So uh, now, as I just uh, show you, the topological insulator satisfy the first condition for the quantum anomalous hole effect. And the second condition is we need to make the material become a ferromagnetic insulator. And uh, this is topological insulator. This is surface state. It is protected by time reversal symmetry. If we could introduce the ferromagnetic order into this kind of topological insulator, the time reversal symmetry will be broken and a gap will open at this kind of the diagonal point. So if we could tune the chemical potential into this gap, 
we could realize the quantum anomalous Hall effect from the theoretical prediction. And uh, this is just the theoretical picture. We are experimentalist. We need to uh, trans, uh, convert this kind of the theoretical picture into the experimental step. So next, I will show you how to reach the quantum anomalous Hall from TI step by step. So first, we uh, used the MBE to glue the thin film of 3D topological insulator. You know, this is the uh, the bike, uh, this is the 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 the, the RPS band map of the MB gluon bismar selenide on the graphene substrate. We can see that uh, from the from one quintuple layer to six quintuple layer. One quintuple layer is just one nanometer uh, of the bismar selenide. We can see the very good this kind of quantum well states here, quantum well states, and this kind of quantum quantum well states indicates the film with the uniform thickness. And we can see that when the film thickness below six quintuple layer, there is a gap opening. This gap opening is just due to the top and bottom surface hybridization. And, uh, and as you, you, know, you know this, we use MBE to glue the thin film. And as I just introduced, we need to introduce the ferromagnetic orders into topological insulator. So we're using the diluted magnetic doping. As you may know, there are three basic, there are three members in bismuth selenide family topological insulators, uh, bismuth selenide, bismuth teride, and antimuth teride. So we tried very hard and tried uh, most of the, the transition metals in the periodic table. So we finally using the, the we, we decided to use in the chromium, we can say that chromium doped to bismuth selenide, this chromium doped to bismuth teride and chromium doped to antimuth teride. We can see in chromium dose bismuth selenide, there is no hysteresis. So this is just a paramagnetic. Uh, it's not good. So we forget this kind of the paramagnetic chromium dose bismuth selenide for the realization of the quantum anomalous Hall effect. And the good news here is the chromium dose bismuth teride and chromium dose antimuth teride both shows the hysteresis at low temperatures. So that means they are ferromagnetic. And the, the good news, the news here is that this material is N-type and this material is P-type. So in order to tune the chemical potential close to the magnetic exchange gap, we, we want to, we, we decided to mix this chromium doped bismuth teride and chromium doped antimuth teride to form this, the four element material, chromium doped bismuth antimuth teride in order to tune the chemical potential uh, into the, uh, magnetic exchange gap. And it, let's take a look, you know, that we want to achieve this kind of quantum anomalous Hall effect, we need to perform the transport environment. So we grow the material in, in some insulating substrate. So here, let's take a look at the transport phenomena. We can see that this is the five quintuple layer chromium dose to bismuth antimony terror. We systematically change the bismuth antimony ratio. We can see that uh, and like the diluted magnetic semiconductor, like the magnets doped gallium arsenide, we can see here is when you tune this kind of the, uh, the carrier type, the ferromagnetic uh, is all, ferromagnetism is always here. And uh, we can realize the ferromagnetism in P-type and N-type and also in this kind of uh, insulating regime between the 0 0.2 and 0 0.25. And here, there we can see is the anomalous hole resistance actually shows a maximum uh, when the X between 0 0.2 and 0 0.25. That tells us uh, when you reduce the carrier density in this kind of material, the anomalous hole resistance uh, become larger. So this is actually a good signature uh, for the quantum anomalous hole effect. And here we can see that, and in all these sample, no matter this kind of the carrier type and the carrier density it always shows the ferromagnetism. As I just told you, this is just the, 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 the basic requirement for the realization of the quantum anomalous Hall effect. And later with many efforts, we tried more than a thousand samples. And in 2013, uh, we were the first to realize the quantum anomalous Hall uh, effect in the chromium doped to bismuth antimateride film. So here, uh, are the magnetic field dependence of the hole resistance. We can see that at zero magnetic field, the hole resistance is almost quantized and the longitudinal resistance is vanishing. So if we just take this point at zero magnetic field and tune the gate, is the gate dependence of the zero magnetic field, hole resistance and longitudinal resistance, uh, we can see that 
at the charge neutral point that's between the uh, chemical potential into the magnetic exchange gap, we can see the whole resistance exhibits a plateau here. And at the same time, the longitudinal resistance shows a, a very sharp dip, uh, dip here and down to about 2.5 uh, kilo. This is the first sample showing the quantum anomalous phenomena. And this kind of observation actually marks the uh, discovery of the quantum anomalous effect. And later I, uh, uh, later I moved to MIT for my postdoc at MIT in collaboration uh, with, uh, with the Moses at Penn State, Moses Chen at Penn State, uh, we realized the second system, uh, the second quantum anomalous core system in the vanadium doped bismuth antimatter. This is actually quite a similar system. It just changed the, the doping. And we note that the, from the DFT calculation, the one indium doped TIA, there is no quantum anomalous for state. It just because of the formation of the impurity band. But the reason we try it is just because the one indium doped TIA, there is very good ferromagnetism. And we finally realized the uh, quantum anomalous for state in the one indium doped bismuth antimatteride film. And we can see in this system, it shows very high precision. Uh, quantum anomalous whole state, we can see that the whole resistance is fully quantized and the longitudinal resistance is, uh, uh, is below three ohm. So by performing this kind of the local and non-local environment, we demonstrated this kind of the chiral energy transport uh, in quantum anomalous whole insulators. So, and uh, after four years postdoc at MIT in 2017, I joined the Penn State. The first project, uh, the projected uh, project uh, we tackled is the realization of the action insulator state uh, in the magnetic TI sunway structure. We know that action uh, is a definition from particle physics, uh, which is hypothesis by the Frank Wilczek and as yet, uh, observed in the particle physics field. So to realize the action insulator uh, state in the topological magnetic topological insulator system, it requires three conditions. You know, this is just a theoretical prediction uh, in the 2008. And the TI must be in 3D regime and all the surface must be gapped like this. So must be gapped and all this, including the side surface and the bulk uh, should be still keeps the time reversal symmetry. So as I just uh, introduced, you know, the, in the previous two slides, the quantum anomalous whole effect already being realized in the chromium doped and vanadium doped uh, magnetic TI systems. And the chromium doped quantum anomalous whole and the vanadium doped uh, quantum anomalous whole with the uh, different QCVT field. So we decided to group this kind of the survey structures. So this is chromium doped and bismuth antimatteride, and in the middle is undoped TIA, and on the bottom is grew the vanadium doped bismuth antimatteride. Because this, the, the top layer and the bottom layer uh, with different QCVT field. So, uh, so you know, in principle, at some magnetic field regime, we could realize this kind of the anti-parallel alignment. You know, the top surface points up and the bottom surface points down. And the whole conductance from the top surface and bottom surface will cancel each other. And the, the total whole conductance will be zero. So this is just the from transport uh, point of view to understand the action insulator. So when they are pointing uh, the, the parallel alignment, it, this is just a quantum anomalous for because each surface contributes the E square over two H. Your two surface will contribute the E square over H. So this is quantum anomalous whole state. You know, this is just the TM image of our sample. We can see the sample quality is good. And uh, let's take a look of the transport film, uh, transport data. So we can see that uh, this is the magnetic field, uh, the magnetic field dependence of the whole conductance. We can see that at very high magnetic field, they will um, parallel aligned. This is just the quantum anomalous whole state. When you sweep back the magnetic field, the chromium layer, the chromium layer will be first swept and forms this kind of the anti-parallel alignment. You know, as I just introduced in the previous slide, this is just the action insulator state uh, predicted by, uh, by theory. 
And uh, we, if you further sweep the magnetic field, the magnetic layer will be also points down. This is forms the quantum anomaly state again. So for this kind of action insulator state is a good candidate for this kind of the detection of the uh, topological magnetoelectrical effect. And what is topological magnetoelectrical effect? It's just different from the, the, uh, the, the, the conventional magnetoelectrical effect. And in this here is the, the electrical magnetization is parallel with the uh, mag uh, with the electrical uh, polarization is parallel with this kind of the magnetization in this kind of bulk. And also the coefficient between the magnetization and the electrical polarization uh, is quantized. You know, this kind of the work is still undergoing in my lab. And uh, we know that in the quantum anomaly score effect is already realized in the chromium and vanadium doped TI system. In addition to these two system, the C equals one quantum anomaly score effect is all also realized in these three system. And in both realized in, you know, the, in the past two years. And uh, in 2020, in this kind of the exfoliate um, intrinsic magnetic TF flake, we call it a magnet space materialized flake. And real, in, with the order number layers, realize the uh, quantum anomaly hole state at uh, this kind of the zero magnetic field. And also in this kind of the twisted bilayer graphene uh, system, and uh, using this kind of the interaction to make a gap to realize this kind of the uh, quantum anomaly hole state. And, uh, and just re more recently in this kind of the AB stacked mulitaride and tungsten selenide uh, bilayers, and also realize the C equals one to quantum anomaly hole state. So in, in, this, in all these system, we can say that the chain number is equals one. But we know that we, although we say that this kind of the uh, chiral ID state is this pension is, um, but we, 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 you know, when we measure, take the measurement on this kind of the quantum anomaly force state, we need some contact. If we put the contact, there will be contact resistance, and the contact resistance is h over c square. From this kind of the equation, we can see if we could increase c, we could reduce the contact resistance. So here uh, we will think about how to increase the c. Is can we realize the quantum anomaly force insulators? Uh, with the uh, high chain number, you know, this is the, uh, this is just what we call it uh, high chain number quantum anomalies or insulators. So uh, first, let me compare to the C equals one quantum anomalies for effect and the high chain number quantum anomalies for effect. You know, this is the C equals one quantum anomalies for effect. There is only one carol ID channel. So when, uh, when the electron travels from the carol ID channel to the normal metal con contact, just like the car from, uh, from the highway to the, uh, to the from, from, from the highway to the some downtowns through a single lane, it usually takes a very long time. But in this kind of the high chain number of quantum anomalies for insulator, for example, this is C equals three quantum anomalies for insulators. So it can uh, greatly reduce the time from the downtown to the, from the highway to the downtowns. So just like this kind of the multiple, this kind of the, the lanes highway. So it will great, uh, greatly reduce the time. And uh, in the quantum anomalies for system, it will greatly reduce the, uh, contact resistance. And uh, we realized uh, in our experiment, we realized the high chain number, this kind of the uh, quantum anomaly hole insulators by stacking the C equals one quantum. This is C equals one quantum anomaly hole uh, layers. With, as I just introduced is chromium dot to bismuth antimetaride. And here is the, 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 the normal insulator layers. But we know that I'm a uh, MBE grower just from the group's point of view. Uh, it's very difficult to find this kind of the normal insulators to connect this kind of the C equals one quantum anomalies for uh, layers. We know that this normal insulator should share this kind of the same lattice structure as topological insulator. So in our, in our experiment, the idea we used is just, we know that when you introduce the chromium or vanadium in the uh, bismuth antimetaride, it will uh, reduce the spin orbit coupling and drive this kind of the topological insulator. If heavily doped, it will drive this kind of the uh, topological insulator 
uh, to uh, normal insulator layers. So we're using this kind of very heavily chromium doped uh, topological insulator layers as the uh, as the normal insulator to connect this kind of the C equals one quantum anomalous hole layers to realize the uh, high chain number uh, quantum anomalous hole effect. So this is the G uh, image we grew at. This is three quintuple layer heavily chromium doped bismuth antimatter. This is undoped TL layers. And as I do uh, told you, heavily chromium doped, this will become a normal insulator. And uh, be just because of the proximity effect, it can drive this kind of the undoped TL layer here, become this kind of the quantum anomalous hole insulator layers. So the total chain number in this kind of the layer, it just determines determined by how many these kind of the undoped TL layers in the multi-layer samples. And from the TM image, we can see the magnetic TL and the TM multi-layer sample uh, with this kind of the uh, highly ordered lattice structure. And uh, we fabricate the magnetic TL and the TL multi-layer samples uh, with one to five this kind of period. You know, this is just a survey structure, this painter layer structure. And we also performed the transport measurement. We can see, let's take a look at the transport measurement. We can see that in these five sample, the whole resistance at zero, this is just a magnetic field dependence, whole resistance and longitudinal resistance. And we can see is in this kind of the surface layers because there is only one layer of the undoped tier layer is quantized at h over e square. Here is h over two e square. And he is h over c three e square and to h over two uh, five e square. We can see that the the zero magnetic field whole resistance is determined by how many these kind of the uh, the the quantum the undoped TL layers in these kind of the samples. And from this kind of the transport result, we can see we realize the quantum anomalous for insulators uh, with the chain numbers uh, from one to five. And uh, uh, this kind of the high chain number of quantum anomalous hole insulator layers are further demonstrated by the gate dependence. You know, if we just take the point at zero magnetic field and tune the gate, we can see that uh, this kind of the gate dependent zero magnetic field longitudinal resistance and hole resistance, we can see that uh, at a charge neutral point, all the hole resistance shows a plateau and the uh, longitudinal resistance shows uh, this kind of the deep and uh, shows a deep here. You know, from this kind of the uh, gate dependence data, we clearly confirm this kind of the, uh, the quantum anomalous hole state we uh, achieved are uh, the high chain number uh, quantum anomalous hole effect. And in the, in the same sample configuration, we found that the, uh, the, the high chain number, the chain number of this kind of the, the, the in this kind of the multi-layer sample can be tuned uh, by this kind of control the chromium doping levels in the sample. For example, we take this kind of the painter layer as an example. We can see that from in this kind of painter layers, if we change, this is the magnetic TL layers, and this is undoped TL layers, and if we change the magnetic doping level in the magnetic TL layers, we can see that with lower doping level, the sample shows this kind of the C equals to one quantum anomalous hole effect. And with higher doping level, it shows the C equals to two quantum anomalous hole insulator layers. And we can see that the reason is just because, as I just told you, with the lower doping level, this layer, this layer is still uh, is still topo uh, topological, is uh, topological. So this is topological, undoped TL layer, this undoped TL layer, this, uh, this three layer shares the same topology. So there are only top surface state and bottom surface state. And each surface contributes E square over two H. So the total is E square over uh, H. This is just a C equals to one quantum anomalous hole effect. So if the doping level become higher, this is become normal insulator layers. You, there, there will be two, this kind of the quantum anomalous hole layer here. It will form this kind of the four uh, non-trivial uh, surface or interface state, and each is just a half quantized. So the total should be uh, uh, two E square or H. This is the C equals to two uh, quantum anomalous hole layers. And this kind of the, uh, the chromium, the, 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 the chain number tuning is further demonstrated by this kind of the gate tuning. We can see that 
uh, when you tune the gate for the lower doping level, the uh, quantize at h over e square. And for the high doping level, they quantize at h over two e squares. You know, this is clearly demonstrated the this kind of the chromium doping can change the, can tune the uh, chain numbers in the sample. And our experimental result is also well interpreted by our uh, theoretical, this kind of uh, calculation uh, performed by uh, my colleague, uh, Tao Xing Liu at uh, Penn State. So in addition to the magnetic doping level, we also tune the chain number by changing the thickness. You know, here, as I told you, this is a C equals to one quantum anomalous Fourier. This is also C equals to one quantum anomalous Fourier. If we fix the doping level here is 0 0.24 is uh, uh, normal layers. So if we change the thickness, we can actually change the interactions between the two quantum anomalous four layers. We can see when the film is very thin, the interaction is strong. So this is still C equals to one quantum anomalous four layers. We can see that when the D is zero and D is one quintuple layer, it shows the C equals to one quantum anomalous four effect. And when the D is uh, between two to four, it shows the C equals to two uh, quantum anomalous four effect. And uh, here is, we can use in this picture to understand, you know, when the interaction is strong, these two quantum anomalous four layer will become one quantum anomalous four layer. So this is just a C equals to one quantum anomalous four effect. When this interaction is weak, you know, there will, it will become two quantum anomalous four uh, layers. So it shows the C equals to two uh, quantum anomalous four effect. And this kind of the changing the, the thickness of the middle magnetic TI layers is also further demonstrated by the gate dependence uh, of the zero magnetic field uh, hole resistance. We can see that when the D equals zero and D equals one, it uh, indeed uh, quantized at H over E square uh, hole resistance. And, uh, and for the D from the two quintuple layer to three and four quintuple layer, we can see that at the charge neutral point, the whole resistance is quantized at uh, h over two e square. So this kind of the experimental observation is also well interpreted uh, by our theoretical calculation. We can see that if you tune the thickness in the middle, we could uh, change this kind of the c equals to one quantum anomalous hole insulator layer to c equal to two quantum anomalous hole uh, insulator layers. And more recently, we further, you know, we further realized this kind of the chain number change induced quantum phase transition, which as I just told you, when we tune this kind of the chromium doping level in this kind of the magnetic tier and tier multi-layers, we could uh, tune the chain number from one to two. You know, here is the uh, C equals to one quantum anomalous for insulator layer. There is only one carol edge state. And this is the C equals to two quantum anomalous for insulator layers. There are two chiral edge state. But in the previous work, we just tuned this kind of the, at lower doping level, we realize C equals to one and higher doping level is C equal to two. And here we, we want to systematically change this kind of the chromium doping level. But here the sample structure is a little bit different. We fix the chromium doping level in the top and bottom layer. It just changed the chromium doping layer, layer in the middle to change this kind of the topology of the the middle magnetic TL layers. And we want to take a look from the C equals to one quantum anomalous hole to C equals to two quantum anomalous hole. What will happen to the original Carroll ID state from the C equal to one quantum anomalous hole and how to evolve the second uh, Carroll ID channels uh, in this kind of the C equals to two uh, quantum anomalous hole insulator layers. And uh, uh, here are the transport results. We can see that with uh, this kind of the very lower doping level with this kind of 0 0.08, it indeed shows this kind of the C equals to one quantum anomalous hole state. With increase this kind of the chromium doping level, we can see the whole resistance uh, monotonically de decrease and the longitudinal resistance first increase and then decrease. And uh, for the 0 0.26, this kind of the doping level, 
it shows this kind of C equals to two quantum anomalous host state. And this kind of from the 0 0.15 to 0 0.2, this kind of the doping level in the middle, we indeed realize this kind of the uh, quantum phase transition from the C equal to one quantum anomalous for insulator to C equal to two uh, quantum anomalous for insulator. So let's summarize this kind of the uh, zero field, uh, just in this kind of slide, zero field uh, magnetic, zero field, uh, mag zero field hole resistance and longitudinal resistance as a function of the doping level. Uh, we can see that the, the when the uh, when the doping level is below 0 0.14, it shows the C equals to one quantum anomalous hole effect. When the doping level above the 0 0.26, it shows the C equal to two quantum anomalous hole effect. When the uh, when the X between 0 0.14 and 0 0.26, uh, it just shows this kind of the plateau phase transition. But we know that in quantum hole effects, there is also plateau phase transition. But that kind of plateau phase transition is usually driven by the magnetic field or to the uh, carrier density under high magnetic field. But here we can see that the plateau phase transition is realized uh, under zero magnetic field. Actually, there is a very interesting phenomenon here is we can see that during the quantum phase transition is plateau phase transition. We can see that uh, the whole angle is just the whole resistance, this is whole resistance, this longitudinal resistance. The, the ratio between them uh, is always greater than one. But we know that in the quantum anomalous hole field, we usually using this kind of ratio to determine if the quantum anomalous hole state is, survive, is surviving or not. So here, because the, the, the ratio is always greater than one, we can see that during the transition regime, the Carroll ID transport, the original Carroll ID transport uh, always persisted. And uh, in this kind of regime, the Carroll ID transport and the bulk transport coexisted during this kind of plateau phase transition. And uh, in the last uh, uh, three slides, uh, I will briefly introduce our work about this kind of absence of the evidence uh, for the Carol Moranas uh, in the quantum anomalous hole and the superconductor device. You know, this is just our device. This is the schematic of the, our device. We can see that uh, there, there, there are two parts in this kind of the device and the left part is just the nanobeam strip. This is just a from theoretical prediction if this is quantum anomalous hole insulator, if you put a, a, a S wave superconductor here, if you take the two terminal measurement from this kind of the two terminal, uh, very simple electrical transport measurement, you could get this kind of the evidence uh, for the Carroll Marana. It's just from the, it forms the Carroll topological superconductivity. And uh, we here we the, the 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 right part is just the we call it quantum anomalous hole and nanobeam nanobeam finger device. Using this kind of finger device, we could perform the uh, angle of reflection measurement. And from this kind of measurement, we can check the transparency uh, between the quantum anomalous hole and the superconducting nanobeam film. And uh, we using this kind of the angle of reflection to check the uh, transparency. We can see here is the uh, the conductance all is enhanced about uh, eighty percent. You know the the perfect and the refraction is is doubled should be. So here is the enhanced eighty percent. It tells us the transparency between the quantum anomalous hole and the superconducting nanobe film is good. You know in on this kind of sample we performed uh, two terminal measurement on this side. We can see that the it it shows this kind of the e square over two h but this is different from the theoretical prediction. So uh, this is the, the you know, the, the, according to the theoretical prediction is the observation, this kind of the E square over 2H can be considered uh, as the uh, formation of the Carol Marana in the quantum anomalous hole and the superconductor layers. So in order to, to, to demonstrate it, if this kind of the E square over 2H uh, is related to the Carol Marana or not, we performed this kind of the control measurement. You know, this is the control measurement. So if we put this kind of the, wind this kind of the superconductor strip, you know, there will be four Marana formed. Here is the from gamma one to gamma four. And if, if we take the electric, uh, the two terminal measurement, 
each of you, uh, you know that we could check if there is Karamara physics. But you know that in order to check from this kind of the two terminal environment, the E square over two is related to uh, Karamara or not, we can put this kind of the two superconductor strip. This is very simple in our experiment. So if you put two this kind of the superconducting strip, you know, it in principle forms this kind of the uh, five Karamara. And, uh, and here from the gamma one to gamma four, when you take the two terminal environment, if this kind of the two terminal resistance E square over two H indeed related to the Karamara, it should be always E square over two H. So we performed the transport environment. So here, uh, here are the, the transport result. And if we can see here, the sample we used is six quintuple layer bismuth antimony and chromium doped bismuth antimony terabyte. And in this kind of the sample, it shows the zero hole conductance plateau is the is just the, the, the in the 2D regime. We can see that the in this kind of the quantum anomalous hole and the nano with only one nano beam strip, it shows the E square over 2H is just the similar as I introduced in the in my previous slide. If you put this kind of the two nano beam strip, it actually become uh, e square over three h rather than always keep at e square over two h. So here, actually, you know, from this kind of the very simple uh, control experiment, it shows that the e square over two h from this kind of the two terminal environment is just a, seri a serious connection uh, of the quantum anomalous hole sessions in our sample. Because if you put a nano beam strip here. This side is a quantum anomalous hole layer, and this side is also a quantum anomalous hole layer. And each quantum anomalous hole layer will contribute uh, E square over H. So two of them, it does if serious connection, it become uh, E square over two H. If three of them, if you put two of them, if there are three parts, each one is E square over H, it will becomes the uh, E square uh, over three H uh, conductance, two terminal conductance. You know, we measured more than 30 devices in our experiment, uh, and we always see these kind of the phenomena. So that actually tells us the E square over 2H observed in this kind of the quantum anomalous hole and the superconductor uh, uh, hybrid device is unlikely induced by the formation of the Carol Moranas. And the similar result is also observed in the Lawrence Mollenkamp's group and the Derek Gold Hubbins group of Stanford and the Chi Kun Xue's group of Tsinghua University. And here we come to an end with the summary. So we are the first to realize the quantum anomalous hole effect in the chromium and vanadium doped uh, topological insulator system. And we fabricate the magnetic TI sandwich structure and are first to realize the axon insulator state. And more recently, uh, we fabricated the magnetic tier and the tier multilayer structures and realized the high chain number of quantum anomalous hole effect. And we also uh, realized the by systematically tuned the chromium doping level in the painter layer structure. We found this kind of the zero magnetic field plateau transition chain number change uh, induced quantum phase transitions uh, in the higher chain number uh, quantum anomalous hole uh, insulators. And uh, we fabricate in the quantum anomalous hole and a superconductor device uh, by performing this kind of electrical transport environment. Uh, we found that the half quantized plateau uh, is unlikely uh, induced by the formation of the uh, Carol Maranas. Okay, with that, thank you. Thank you, Chuzu. This was this was a great uh, history and and modern. Uh, perspective on all of this uh, wonderful research that you and, and also others have been uh, done. Um, are there any questions from the audience? Uh, you can, uh, uh, there we go, there's one. Uh, go ahead, Niels. Yeah, thanks Thanks very much for this wonderful talk. Um, very impressive work overall. Um, I was wondering about the temperature scales of all of these uh, quantum anomalous hole phases. So um, I think they started at sub millikelvin or uh, so millikelvin range and but sub Kelvin range and now the, the best chromium and vanadium doped 
systems are stuck at a few Kelvin, if I understand it correctly. Uh, now I think the the you know as I just show you here, and uh, there are several of these kind of the quantum anomalous score regime. Uh, I want to see some words is the just uh, you know in the quantum anomalous score field, the critical temperature the definition is pretty uh, mess. And uh, you know for some system they just to see the one Kelvin, some system they just mini Kelvin, but the criteria is different. If you using some the similar criteria, in my opinion, the critical temperature should be quite similar. For example, if we define the critical temperature uh, as this kind of the ratio equals to one, or if we define the criteria is 97% or 99% or 98%, I think the critical temperature in uh, no matter in the intrinsic magnetic tier or in magnetic doped tier, also in twist system, the critical temperature should be quite similar. And I can tell you is in magnetically doped topological insulator films, if we using this kind of the ratio Rx over Rxx equals one as a criteria, the critical temperature should be uh, around 10 Kelvin, this kind of level. We can see the quantum anomalous whole state starts to appear at 10 Kelvin. But if you want to get the very good quantization, it should be in the uh, milli Kelvin, this kind of the regime. So that's also the reason why in our environment, we usually perform the dilution environment. We want to get the 99% of the quantization, you know, the, but here we can see that it's just maybe in this, in this kind of the magnet space material, although the temperature is 1.4 Kelvin, the quantization should be less than 97%. And just a follow up. So, so do you do you see a route to so to to room temperature somehow? Or? Uh, I think in this in all this system, in my opinion, it's pretty difficult to realize the room temperature quantum anomalous ball effect because we need this kind of the uh, no matter in ferromagnetic or or this kind of the twisted system, we need the ferromagnetic TC should be around the room temperature. That's pretty deep. For example, let me see is in the magnetically doped TN. If you want to increase the uh, magnetic doping level, as I just introduced in my talk, it usually drives the magnetic doped TN become trivial. You will lose, you will lose the, uh, the, the quantum anomalous whole state if you increase the magnetic doping level. Uh, if, in my opinion, if you want to realize the high temperature quantum anomalous whole system, we need to find the new uh, materials. That's my opinion. Hi, David. Oh, so, yeah. good. so, hi, Tracy. So, I, I really appreciate what uh, Niels opened up there, and I, I agree with how Tracy responded. Um, I do think that there are different things that one might want. So, Tracy, you mentioned that it depends what your criterion is for you know when you say this is the temperature and it's true that that's been all over the place um and um but if you if you're interested in metrology and are willing to get cold then i mean, I, I had never been a metrologist but i i was interested in how far this could be pushed and therefore examined you know can we get um quantization to um, in the first step, pardon 10,000, and then um, I would say we're now at maybe pardon 10 million. Um, so it's it's not quite where um, gallium arsenide or graphene is, but um, I think that if the goal were to get quantization at the roughly part per billion level, getting comparable to what the metrologists um, at uh, standards bureaus achieve in um, quantum hall systems, but without a magnetic field. I think that <clears throat> I think there is a path to that, and I think that um, it, to understand what's possible, it would be, it would be necessary to do what Trizu suggested, which is to have a consistent uh, set of criteria. And I'm <clears throat> I think it it might be there more important uh, to ask okay. right where where do you get to a pardon a thousand or, uh, um, but but in any case, I so I, I just wanted to comment on that since that was discussed. But I also wanted to 
um, to come back to your uh, your last um, slides, where I think you you know you made a very important contribution to the discussion in this field uh, with with that work on, um, and I, I wanted to get your thoughts. You, you said that uh, the niobium was very well coupled to the magnetic TI. Um, if you wanted to try to realize the original vision of um, uh, of getting um, a half plateau on, associated with a Majorana mode, um, do you think that that could be possible if you tuned the trans uh, tuned the transparency appropriately, or is there some scenario where you think that original idea could be rescued, um, or is it simply just not a an experimentally meaningful uh, concept. Yeah, you... yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, David. And uh, let let me comment uh, this here also. And uh, you know, you know the actually, you know the you know usually in the magnetically doped here we perform the measurement and midi Kelvin. That's uh, that's the induce this kind. In this field always call this kind of quantum normal for state in the magnetic duped here is always at very low temperature. But, but we, I want to see something related to this kind of the twist system. We can see that in the twist system, actually we can see that in both this system, you know, when the longitudinal resistance is finite, but the whole resistance is already greater than the e H over E squares. That's I never see in the magnetically doped TI system. In my opinion, the, the whole resistance should be uh, always lower than this kind of the uh, H over E square. In particular, when the longitudinal resistance is finite. And, uh, and I think that might be because of some disorder or some defects in this kind of the twist bilayer system. That's just my understanding. And, uh, and uh, for this kind of the high precision measurement, I think uh, the magnetically doped TL or this kind of the, this, and uh, intrinsic this kind of the magnet based material might be the much better than this kind of the twist system. And, uh, and the, the magnetically doped TL is easier to reproduce it. And that's my comment. And for the, uh, for this, the, the final part about this kind of quantum norms for and superconductor hybrid uh, system. And uh, from, my, uh, from our experiment, we didn't rule out the theoretical prediction, definitely. So, and, uh, and we also didn't rule out in this kind of configuration to detect uh, the Marana physics. I can only see in the millimeter size. Millimeter is very important in this kind of work. And millimeter size quantum anomalous hole and superconductor hybrid structure, we cannot use in this kind of the configuration to detect the Marana physics. And as the as the David just said, if we want to induce the this kind of the, for example, let's take this this. If we want to induce this kind of the topological chiral topological superconductivity here, we need two things. One is we need the proximity effect between the chiral eddy state and uh, uh, superconductor layers, and we also need we also want to avoid the shorting effect between this kind of the two chiral eddy state. But uh, as an experimentalist in the millimeter size for the superconductor, it always shares the same chemical potential if there is proximity effect. But as, as, as David said, in this kind of the very highly transparent quantum anomalous hole and superconductor layers, I don't think this kind of the uh, this kind of the hybrid structure is good because it should be always short in millimeter size. But as David said, if I don't know if we could, you know, systematically introduce the uh, introduce some barriers between the quantum anomalous hole and the superconductor layers, and if we could get the proximity effect, but at the same time, the two this kind of the superconductor layers cannot short this kind of the two parallel eddy state. It may, it may be possible we could use in this kind of the configuration to detect the Marana physics, but it should be definitely in the nanometer, uh, nanometer this kind of the size level rather than the millimeter size level. That's my comment. Um, I think we have another raised hand here by Hui. 
Uh, hi, this is Hui. Uh, I have a question about uh, the multi-layer structure that you've built for to realize the high churn number quantum anomalous Hall effect. So, so here what you need is uh, a layer of normal insulator and a layer of magnetic to blotting insulator. So, so actually the uh, the bismuth antimony telluride or or this group group of material can be a normal ins uh, insulator below a certain number of countable layers. So why don't you just use a thinner layer of this bismuth uh, telluride layer as a normal ins insulator layer, and then uh, 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 like a not so heavily doped uh, magnetic layer as the magnetic TI layer. Yes, and uh, and here you know the here you know that we need to you know in this kind of the configuration here is actually the normal insulator layer is magnetically doped to TI layer because we heavily doped, and the pure TI layer is the quantum anomalous hole layer, and the reason in this kind of pure TI layer we formed uh, the the quantum anomalous hole effect is formed is just because of the proximity effect according to the transport result. But you know, if in this kind of layer, you can definitely reduce the thickness of the uh, undoped TIA layer. But uh, because the environment, the top layer and the bottom layer is still in the, uh, in the topology regime, in the topological regime, you know, because the, the, the top layer and bottom layer is in top, uh, topological regime, you, you cannot use in linear layer because it will become one system. It, it, it heavily determined by the environment is rather than uh, thickness. You know, for example, let's say the, the two or three or four, this kind of interval is, we cannot call it normal insulator. It should be in quantum spin hole regime. That's, that's another answer, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a, a, a different question, but on the same multi-layers. Uh, which is that um, I think in some of these slides, it became evident that as you go thicker and thicker, the longitudinal resistance starts to rise. Um, yes. And so I'm wondering, you know, how far can, can, can that be improved? And, you know, like how high of a churn number can we, can, do we have hopes to achieve? Uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a very good growth question. You know, the, in my opinion, this kind of the, uh, longitudinal resistance uh, become larger uh, as you increase the thickness, it's just because of the, uh, the growth and because of the synthesis. And uh, now we, after we published this paper, we greatly uh, uh, improved the growth recipe. Now I can say is we can grow the uh, C equals to 10, this kind of the quantum anomalous hole here. We know that if the C is become larger, the whole resistance it will become very, uh, become smaller. So now we can distinguish the C equal to nine and C equal to 10, this kind of the uh, quantum anomalous hole insulator layers. But you know, we know that in my opinion here, the longitudinal resistance become larger, it just becomes synthesis. It's, it's difficult, it's become difficult to make the, the, the bulk become insulated if you increase the thickness of the sample. Great, thanks. Um, looks like we have a question from uh, Molly Anderson. You can go ahead and uh, unmute. Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, kind of on a related subject, I wonder if you could say a little about the maybe philosophical difference between these higher order churn insulators and C equals one systems wired up in parallel. Because uh, I guess maybe the transport. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you repeat your question? Um, yeah, so I guess, so you're saying that these are higher order churn insulators with like C equals two, C equals three values. Yes, yes. Um, and I guess if you took like completely separate C equals one hull bars and wired them up in parallel, I think the transport might look similar. Uh, so yes, I agree. Could you explain that difference? Uh, yes, and uh, actually this is, uh, this is a very good question. Actually, this was a concern when I uh, was writing this paper, you know, the if just a serious connection, uh, that's just uh, not uh, very important. So when I was talking with the, the, my theoretical collaborator, just my colleague, Professor Chao Xing Liu, and he told me that if you grow this, let's take this kind of painter layer as an example. If we grow this kind of painter layer, uh, you know, this is the, the C equals to one quantum norm. There are two C equals to one quantum norms for uh, layers. 
from the theoretical prediction, from the theoretical point of view, you know, if you put anything between this kind of the C equals to Y uh, quantum norms whole layers, there should be always interaction that it should be uh, exponential decay. It cannot become zero. That's from a theoretical theorist point of view. And uh, so in, in our experiment, actually we systematically change this kind of the uh, thickness as I just showed you in our, uh, in our in my slide, and uh, we can see that from the from the two to four quintuple layer, it all shows this kind of the uh, the C equal to two quantum anomalous whole layers in this kind of the painter layer structure. We can see from C equal to two to C equal to four, we definitely systematically change this kind of the interaction. It should be different from just the two quantum uh, quantum anomalous whole whole bar series connection, uh, the parallel connection. It should, it should be there is the, there should be uh, the interactions between the two uh, quantum anomalous whole layers in these kind of the structures. That's my opinion. Great, thank you. All right, All right. If, if there are no further questions, I think we can conclude. So let's all thank again, uh, Chu Zhu for this wonderful talk and for uh, uh, answering all our questions at the end of the seminar, and I'll stop the recording now. Thanks again, everyone. Yeah, thank you.